Look, I want to start off with Liverpool and uh, just give my thoughts on that. Um, I just think there's something about Liverpool at the moment that really, look, Man United aren't in a title race, but I imagine for City and Arsenal fans, you probably look at that Liverpool game today at Forest and go, they'll win that game. And then when it's like six, seven minutes into a, a stoppage time and it's nil-nil, you start to think, oh, this could be points dropped. And literally the last touch of the game, there they are getting the winner. Um, but from a Liverpool point of view, I mean, they're probably almost expecting that now. And from 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 all reports of the game, it was a very, very close game and it could have gone either way. But Liverpool are the team that gets the goal at the end. And you look back to the Carabao Cup final last week and, and they're doing this on fumes, really. You know, the, the starting midfield was McAllister, Gomez and Clark. And, and Liverpool have got a lot of midfielders, but they've got a lot of injuries. And it just shows you that this belief around Klopp at the moment. I certainly think if Liverpool do go on to win the league, it's games like today that you're going to look at and go, well, those extra two points are massive. Liverpool have got that cushion again now. If they drawn today, Arsenal win on Monday, they go above them on goal difference. Man City win tomorrow, they go above them by a point heading into that massive game at Anfield next week. So have Liverpool got something about them that's been enhanced by this decision by Jurgen Klopp to move on? Um, interesting. Anyway, that's my thoughts on that. Uh, let's get into your calls. But before we get to your calls, we have our question mark feature. So send me a WhatsApp voice note on 03717 and I get I might get to answer that a little bit later in the show. But uh, we've got some calls coming in, 03717 Let's start off with uh, Sid. He's a Forest fan and he wants to talk about the refereeing today. How are you doing, Sid? And uh, what were your thoughts? How are you doing? Are you well? I'm all right, thank you. We're just, yeah, we're just on our way back uh, from the game because we live in Cumbria, so we've got a bit of a travel back. Um, oh, yeah, you just okay. mentioned there. You just mentioned there about the fact that uh, Liverpool won that game and it, it means so much, is this year. But the point that we should have got today would have meant a lot to us also. Um, yeah. The refer the refereeing, I mean, they should know the rules. If they don't know the rules, then there's something wrong. And he, he got the rules wrong blatantly today. I mean, obviously, we've, we've, you've heard about what happened. and uh, But I don't understand. There's a fourth official. There's, there's VAR. They can't get involved. If he's blatantly getting it wrong, why are they not being able to help him out and say, look, you've got that wrong? Change the decision. What? It's wrong. You know, it's crazy. It really is. I presume we're talking here, Sid, about the, the drop ball. Yeah, so, so he went down with a head injury. Fair enough. He stopped the game because it's a head injury. You stopped the game. But the rules state if the opposing team have got the ball outside the box, then you drop, unless it's a free kick, then the drop ball goes to the team that's got the ball. Yeah. He gave the drop ball, he gave the drop ball to Liverpool. There's 30 seconds or so left of the game to play. They kick the ball up the field, they get a corner. So we're now into the 99th minute. The ball comes across, we clear the ball. Okay, you could argue we, we should have, you know, cleared the lines. But it's, why we into the 99th minute is beyond me anyway. But all I'm saying is it's costing us dearly. That point would have been a massive point today. But, you know, more important to us than probably Liverpool win. You know? And I, I'm just sick of it because it turned what was a really good day out. And you, you're going on feeling sick because you think there's something not right here. You know, the whole place turned toxic. Everybody was angry. But it should have been. That was a good game. We're leaving happy. Everybody, fair play, a good result, a good draw. It's so wrong and they should be accountable. It's not fair, you know. Sid, I hope you have a safe trip back and it's a fantastic call to open up the show. Uh, thank you very much for that, Sid. I mean, look, it's interesting with Forrest, isn't it? I, I, there was um, some controversy a couple of weeks ago when they brought Mark Clattenburg in to be their referee advisor. Um, and I was listening to Talk Sport and I think it was Simon Jordan and Jim White were talking about it and saying, I don't really see the point of it. What's he going to do? Talk to them in the week about the decisions. I mean, he can't change it. And as Sid said there... It, if that is the rule and the, the referee's not followed the rule, what, what point is Mark Clattenburg, who was sat there next to Howard Webb in midweek for the Man United game, um, who is the boss of the PGMOL? It's not done Forrest any good, has it? So, look, it's confusing. There's been a lot of mistakes by referees this season. Um, what I would point to what Sid said is when you watch the winning goal by Nunez back, Forrest have got two chances to just boot it into Rose Ed. They don't do it. They're, you know, and, and that allows L Liverpool to do what they did with what was the last action of the game. If Nunez had headed that wide and gone for a goal kick, 
that goal kick would have been the last action. Forrest have got to clear the lines there, really. Um, Josh is a Liverpool fan, a uh, different side, I, I, I would uh, imagine, and a different thought on it. Josh, what were your thoughts on, on the game today and your title credentials? Hi, Mark. How are you? Um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, crazy. Um, I didn't watch the game, obviously, because it was a three o'clock kickoff. Uh, I was at work as well. Uh, I've watched the highlights since I come back. Um, yeah, uh, completely agree with what you said. Um, obviously, there's a bit of controversy with the drop ball and everything like that. Um, but as you say, they had copious amounts of opportunities to boot the ball away, and they never did. Um, you know, the, the movement before the ball gets given to McAllister is basically a pass into his feet. He turns yeah. the defender, crosses the ball in, and Nunes nods it in. So, I mean, I, yeah, I get you. They are angry, but, you know, you've had opportunities to clear it. So, uh, don't know whether you're still there, Josh. I think you might have just cut off. But, um, yeah, look, it, I, I, it's always the way, isn't it? We've all been in that situation where something goes against you. I mean, I remember, I remember Lampard's goal for England. Um, it, well, it wasn't given in the South African World Cup at nil-nil. It was over the line. They battered us in the second half. I think they beat us by four, <laughs> but we still moan about it. So, look, Forrest should have cleared that ball. They should have cleared it. Um, le let's speak to Mark, another Liverpool fan. Uh, how are you doing, Mark? And, um, yeah, what were your thoughts on it? And, look, the momentum that Liverpool have got at the moment going into that City game, are you starting to believe that you can win this league title? Yeah, I thought it was a big result today. Um We've got a difficult week coming up because going away to Prague on Thursday and it would have been good to have a week off and then we've got Man City next Sunday. A uh, lot of players missing. Uh, but the point I wanted to make was uh, Nottingham Forest fans are pointing out the error, the drop ball. The referee did exactly the same thing in the first half in favour of Nottingham Forest. He dropped the ball to the goalkeeper and we wondered what on earth he was doing then. So mm. at least he was, he was, if he was wrong, he was consistently wrong. Now, I don't know if somebody had a word with them at half-time and told them he'd made a mistake. Um, but, uh, you know, you could say it was one each on, on the score of that. Uh, and the other thing was, Nottingham Forest were wasting time towards the end dreadfully. Uh, and it sometimes comes back to bite you when you do that. Uh, Liverpool scored a lot of late goals. I honestly didn't think we were going to do it today. I really didn't. We didn't play very well at all. Very poor in the first half. Looked a bit leggy. Uh, he was brave with the substitutions again. Uh, we started with a very uh, unbalanced and uh, young midfield. We had Gomez playing in midfield again. Um, yeah, yeah. So as long as we keep grinding results out like that, you, you've got to have hope. But um, next Sunday, it's going to be very difficult against Manchester City if we haven't got uh, a few of our stars back. That's my opinion. Thank you very much, Mark. Appreciate that. Um, and uh, keep those calls coming in. I mean, I, I want to. I wouldn't mind having a little chat about Alexi McAllister at some point with somebody because I personally think he's the arguably the most underrated player in the Premier League this season. And we talk about Declan Rice and we talk about Casido and these hundred million pound midfielders. Alexi McAllister costs 40, 50 million pounds. I think he's absolutely fundamental to Liverpool every time I've watched them play. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.